For the past month, I have painstakingly applied the new reformulation of the Fresh Kombucha Facial Treatment Essence to one half of my face and the Kina Kombucha Balancing Ampoule Toner to the other half. And before we get into talking more about these products, do you want to just go ahead and dive right into seeing the before and after? You do. Am I wrong or does my skin look more hydrated on both sides, more even, more brightened? Uh, is the Kana toner Kana a dupe for the fresh essence? Video over? Not quite because of course I want to go through talking about my journey using these two products, talk about why I'm concluding the Kana is a dupe, which means I think the best place to start this video is to talk more about kind of the OG, the fresh kombucha facial treatment essence, which has been around for a while and a lot of people really do love this product. Fresh says this is a product that is meant to help with repairing the skin, it increases the glow in your skin, it contains antioxidants and metabiotics postbiotics. All of which I do agree with. This makes sense just objectively speaking. We've talked about kombucha in the past and what it can do for skin and this is basically a list of what kombucha can do for your skin. Now again this is the 2023 reformulation that Fresh was kind enough to send over for me to then say I found a dupe for. Mostly, mostly. So there are some changes. I'll go ahead and put up the new versus the old ingredients list for you to see and frankly you can see there's really not a huge difference. I feel that if they didn't tell me this was a reformulation, I, I genuinely don't think I would have noticed. Which is good in some ways because I know a lot of people loved the OG and this to me is exactly like using it. Hypothetically, it might be better. It does now have some Artemisia in it, which is a family of ingredients that I do quite like. They did add some rose water into this, rose oil, really, but I, again, did not smell it out and I do not like the smell of rose. Yeah, it smells the same, so maybe they didn't actually add rose oil, maybe they're just disclosing it now. That's always the catch with the word fragrance appearing in products. Yeah, so I'm looking at their Instagram account now, kind of trying to figure out what is supposed to be different, and they're saying it has 32% more antioxidant power, 66% more hydration, wonder how they get such specific numbers, and 24 hours of visible repair. I do see that they're saying it's double fermented kombucha, which might make sense for what I'm going to say a little later in this video. But again, I just, I would not have known if they didn't say any of these things. It feels the same, it's still got that nice viscosity to it, it's thick enough that you don't necessarily need a toning pad. You can just drop it into the palm of your hands and spread it on your face and it does feel instantly hydrating, which so did the original. Now the thing is, this is $82 for five fluid ounces, which makes this out of some people's budgets. I know some people are gonna save up for this in the Sephora sale, and again, if you love this, I'm not gonna say anything bad about it. It does work well for me, I do like it, but let's talk about how I've concluded this Kena is a dupe. Really quickly, my apologies for my previous comfort level in the way I originally pronounced this brand. Yeah, I said Kane originally. It's one of those things where, how did I not even stop to think that that might not be right? You could have presented me with a brand whose tagline is, our skincare products make you able to see your best skin. And I would have been over here going, yeah, let's test this. We're gonna put Kane up against Abel. Anyway, the Kana Balancing Kombucha Ampoule Toner. This one is $16 for five fluid ounces. And even saying that is a little iffy because you know with Korean brands, the prices go up and the prices go down all the time. I did buy mine from Stylevana. I do find it fascinating that such a different ingredients list would have such a similar actual feel to the product itself. It has that same viscosity, it feels very hydrating, it, it sinks into your skin, but it does take a moment just like the fresh. Meaning the only difference is there is much less smell 
to the Kina. Kina is making very similar claims with their kombucha product as Fresh makes with theirs. They say it is a soothing product. They say it is a hydrating product. They say it is antioxidant rich. But when you do look at the ingredients list, you can actually see this product has not just disclosure of how much of the kombucha extract is in this product, which a lot of us do appreciate. We have disclosure of the panthenol percentage, and we also have kind of a lot more going on here. Look at all those different forms of hyaluronic acid that are helpful for penetrating two different layers of your skin. How fascinating. Now, I do think you could look at this ingredients list and say that it is possibly objectively better than Fresh's. So let's go ahead and look at these two ingredients lists side by side. Again, I really think it is quite tempting to say that Kana has the better ingredients list, but I wanna make sure to be honest with you all about how it's actually impossible to say that with some exceptions. If you are somebody who is sensitive to fragrance, then the Kana is a better formula for you personally. It's really important to be aware of the uh, differences in regulation between the United States and between Korea's labeling systems. So we really don't know that, for example, the Kina has more kombucha in it. You do see water listed first on fresh, but that's because of the way our regulations work. I feel like you could look at these two and suspect that the Kana does have more kombucha in it, but in all truth, the Kana also contains cocoa extract, which is gonna darken the product. I have to acknowledge that while the first two ingredients look, again, identical, removing the regulations between the countries, you really can't say with any kind of certainty that the two Saccharomyces ferment filtrates are exactly the same. Have you ever bought black tea from two different brands and noticed that they both taste different? Your taste buds are actually perceiving the subtle composition differences between those. And the reason for this is because when you do talk about plants, when you start talking about plants, when you start talking about tea, there are differences based on where a plant was grown, based on how many nutrients were in the soil, based on the region. It, it really does make a difference. And again, it is quite possible that one of these is double fermented and the other isn't. There are all kinds of things that are left out from the ingredients list that really make skincare a lot more mysterious than some of us would like to admit. I feel like I'm such a bummer in saying this, but I'm, I'm really just trying to be honest with you about things. This is, this is the reality of things, and it's why it's so hard to use the word dupe. So given this truthful discussion that the ingredients list doesn't tell us everything, but these are two products that are very similar in what they are claiming and in what their premise is, Let's go ahead and chat next about my results and my experience. I'll go ahead and roll that beautiful yeast footage of me applying these two products that you saw in my new skincare try-on. So again, for just under a month, I did apply these products day and night. I started this comparison up while I was still in the middle of my Numbuzzin trial. I realized that toner was not working out for me, so I thought, let's switch over to this. So I would say it took about a week for my skin to kind of turn around from that situation. And in the second week, towards the end of the second week, I confess to you all, I was nervous because I've done these dupe videos before, and in the past, you, know, you remember our COSRX Galactomyces versus SK2? All I stinking proved to myself in that trial was that SK2 was that much better. <laughs> and it was happening again. Two weeks into this, I was going, oh no, I'm proving that the fresh is better. Because two weeks into this, that side was looking a lot more radiant. It was really looking good in terms of treating the PIH that I dealt with from the breakouts. It just, it did actually look better. And see, here's the thing. I've realized at this point that two weeks is enough to see how things are going with the product. But I do think if you push it longer, you will probably see even more in terms of results. And that's where things actually got really interesting because what happened is I feel like the Kana toner caught up. It actually caught up, which is amazing. This proves some of my past points on this channel where I've said, you know, the important thing about skincare is always consistency. If you can't afford an $82 product, but you can afford a $16 product, buy it, stick with it, 
use it day and night. Don't fall into that trap of, you know, feeling defeated and just kind of wiping your face with a wipe at the end of the night and going to bed. No, use these affordable products because I truly have felt that you will see results in time. And that is fascinatingly exactly what happened to me in this trial. I really do feel the cana caught up. I find it, again, fascinating that I'm saying this, but that is what I feel. Now listen, there's an additional variable in this video, and I know some of you have thought of it. Some of you have probably already commented it before you got to this point in the video. It's okay, you're right, you're right. As you saw in that clip, for the past month, I didn't just pour these into my hand. To make things simpler, I thought I was applying them to toner pads and leaving the toner pads on my face for about six minutes. So oops, I was trying to make a video directly comparing two toners, but I also coincidentally did another experiment alongside of this. I did sheet masking, a form of sheet masking, twice a day for the past month, and wow, I am so sold on it. <laughs> I know sheet masks have fallen from favor because of their wasteful packaging, but again, I will point out that you can make your own. I do it all the time. There's different methods to do it. Check out that video if you want to know more on that. Yeah, more than anything else, I feel I convinced myself that I really should take the extra time to go ahead and do that method. It was incredible for hydrating my skin. <laughs> so coming to the end of this video, my conclusion is if you do want a kombucha product and you want fast results, the fresh may be the right choice for you. If you are sensitive to fragrance and you still want to try a kombucha product, the Kana might be the right choice for you. Do know this is a plastic bottle though, just as a just as a heads up. It is it is made of recycled materials, but just as a heads up. But third variable again, if you are really looking to boost your hydration in your skin, you may not need to buy either one of these. You may just want to try going back to some of these methods of sheet masking with any hydrating toners or essences that you have. <laughs> Didn't expect this video to be about that, but here we are. I gotta tell you what I observed. But my friends, I think that really brings us to the end of today's video, short and sweet. If you found today's video helpful, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you all next time.